it. Okay. Beautiful. Um, um, there, there's something you mentioned before about men not being heard or people not being heard. Mm -hmm. So let's yeah. talk about Barack Obama in 2008. He spoke to a group of African Americans that felt different, disenfranchised. 95% mm -hmm. of those African Americans voted for him. Donald Trump in 2016, he spoke to coal miners, people who uh, from who had lost their jobs uh, because of industrialization, because of global industrialization. Mm -hmm. Those people voted for him in a large amount because they felt they weren't being spoken to. And we saw on uh, TikTok 12 billion mm -hmm. individual searches of Andrew Tate's name. And at one point in August of last year, him being the most searched human being on the planet right. because he was speaking to a group of people that were not being heard. I, I have this conversation with feminists often. If you completely differ, disagree with everything Andrew Tate says, that's fine. My point is, why did he grow so big right. so fast? Is it because we're all stupid troglodyte uh, <laughs> misogynists? Or was there a group of men that you don't even, as a feminist, acknowledge they have needs and wants and desires as well? When I t explained to them a third of men under the age of 30 are having no sex, they can't believe this fact. They don't believe it's mm. uh, real. What Can you speak to that, uh, that whole idea? And the last thing I actually... Depths of despair, mm. places where Trump's mm. Trump won. Did much can better you, there. Yeah, can you, yeah. can you go into that whole concept? So, I mean, uh, Donald Trump talked about the forgotten Americans, yeah. right? He talked about the people, and, and he just made, I think, a, he made a bunch of people feel heard, yeah. right? Seen. Uh, that turned out to be very politically powerful for him. And of course, that is something that politicians want to do. And to say, look, we see you, we, we, don't, we, we hear you, and, that, and they don't, right? The, the other side don't. Uh, when it comes to figures like Andrew Tate and others, I do think what you're right, that what's much more interesting to me is not what Why, why do you think they were popular? Why do yeah. you think Andrew Tate yeah. was popular? Well, it's, it's, it's the, yeah, it's on the demand side, right? It's not, mm -hmm. it's not what they're supplying that's interesting. It's what, why are people interested in them? And I think the problem is that there are kind of different mixed up reasons why he was popular. And the challenge is to kind of pull those apart a little bit. So number one, mm -hmm. he's transgressive. He was transgressive, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so if you're an adolescent, and especially if you're an adolescent boy, transgression's yes. really exciting. And so the way to transgress now is to transgress against kind of mainstream orthodoxy around issues like- being punk rock, right? that's yeah. what it, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. fine, so transgression, number one. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a bit funny in producing that. Secondly, there was some stuff where he was actually giving straightforward adv advice to people, and it wasn't always terrible, as I kind of suggested earlier. Thirdly, there was some straightforward misogyny in there, just pretty pure misogyny, uh, which is just women are lesser than men. They are second class citizens. They should go back to whatever it was. And I'm not saying that was the bulk of what he was putting out, but it was mm. it was definitely there as well. Um, and so if you put all those things together, what you, you have to disaggregate, which is and, 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 and sorry, um, did I say empathy already? Is yeah, one of the things? Yeah. So like. Don't assume that everybody that was interested in him was just taking all the misogyny on board and saying, okay, Andrew, yes, I'll become a misogynist as well. Actually, they were discounting that, quite a lot of them, but they were saying, at least he's, at least he sees me, at least he understands what I'm going through, or what, whatever it is. Mm. So he was ticking that box. And I think that the, the difficulty is it's easier for some people to just see everybody who looks at him must be a misogynist. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. But we have to worry about, even if you go to him for other reasons than misogyny, mm -hmm. will it be corrosive in the long term, especially for kind of younger younger men and boys, for that for those things to be packaged together? Well, right? my, and that's the, I think yeah, we, need to un, we need to unbundle the appeal of people I, I was like going to say, that I, I think that the reason why a guy like Andrew Tate is uh, popular, and there will be others, by the way, too, sure. um, is because he's the purple cow in the field of brown cows right now. There's so much... Uh, there's so much, uh, I, I don't know, malaise, I guess, to yeah. use one of your words, that when a guy like Andrew Tate comes in, he's, he, he seems like fresh. He seems like there's something new. He seems like there's like this is, this is a, the action hero, right? We need a, an uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger or a, or a Sylvester Stallone. We don't yeah. have those a archetypes. Savior. We don't have those archetypes in popular culture anymore. Yeah. So, when, what, so what is popular culture in 2023? It's the internet. So when when yep. Andrew Tate comes out and he, like he will say he, that's the character he plays. That's one of the one of, one of the things he's saying right now, right? Whether it's a character, whether it's not, I know we both know An Andrew personally, yeah. but whether it's a character or it's not a character, the appeal of that character is he's Han Solo, he's Captain Kirk, he is the he's that unapologetically masculine guy, conventionally masculine guy that. It, it, it's a breath of fresh air they've never heard. That's why well, he's so, that's why he's so, so, uh, so transgressive. So yeah, transgressive. I've got to tell you, as yeah. a Star Wars fan, I'm going to ask you to retract the comparison between Han Solo, Solo and okay. Andrew well, Tate. You, Andrew, you get a scoundrel, and, a scoundrel. How scoundrel. can we say a scoundrel? I mean, he says scoundrel, mm. right? But mm. but Andrew Tate is not Han Solo. What Andrew Tate is doing, I think, is he's taking this 
sort of adolescent performative kind of masculinity, right? And putting it out there, sometimes quite knowingly, I think it is a, it is a performance quite often. And I also think that a lot of the young people are able to kind of see what's performative and what isn't. There's I mean, to, speaking to him personally, it. he's not, I don't think he's the same person offline as he is online. I, I mean, assume that, that yeah. there's a kind of, but the other thing of course he's done is he's like, he mastered the algorithm of short form video content so, before so, anybody so else. So, picked so, up on so that conversation. I mean, he's, he's, his father was a chess grandmaster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I think he's just became, he just, he's, and he's very course, smart guy. And the more hated yeah. he is, the better he does. So when Greta Thunberg kind of tweets at him, that's great for him because the more haters you he get, the more play people, the game. He knows how mm-hmm. the algorithm thrives on conflict. And, and he just absolutely mastered that. Uh, and you saw the result. So, so my question though is where did those men come from? What is happening in society to manufacture that many men who felt unheard? A third of men not having any sex, 80% of men on dating apps being deemed unattractive. What manufactured that? That, that we, we wouldn't, he doesn't have those search results unless there's a group of men that don't feel heard. What's making them not feel heard? Well, I think the first thing is that it is back to the transgression point, which is yeah. that if it's really transgressive to point out that a lot of boys and men are really struggling mm-hmm. in school and in relationships. But, but a lot of them are really right. struggling. They are really struggling, yeah. right? And so this is like, if you have a group of people who are really struggling, and pointing that out and mm. trying to do something about it is something that mainstream institutions and responsible people are not doing. And that becomes, tr- that becomes like a, a shocking thing to point out. I think that's part of it. And so what's happened is there's this real, a real reservoir of actual need and hurt and struggle uh, among a lot of men and, and boys. And mm. if that's not being articulated, discussed in sort of mainstream forums, then the appetite to hear about that is still there. So we create a vacuum. The failure of mainstream institutions and media organizations to be talking just straightforwardly about these issues creates a vacuum. You said when irrespo- when responsible people do not have this conversation, irresponsible people will start to have this conversation. They'll, well, mm. they'll exploit them. And they might exploit them for clicks. They might exploit them for monetary value. So like, w- I think it's Andrew Tate to that extent is our fault. And by our fault, I mean mainstream institutions, you know, think tanks, government, what, you know, universities who aren't talking about these problems of boys and men. Mm. Or if they're doing it, they're doing it in a way that's kind of a semi-embarrassed quick. Uh, could we get this over I tried quickly, to make that think. point on Dr. Phil. I was saying, like, right. you know, you, we could not have that conversation. Right. The, even the conversation we were having on Dr. Phil, right. we could not have that at a major university without getting shot. And, and, and I think I said that I am mm. actually having that conversation yeah. at universities yeah. now, which I, yeah. which I am. Mm-hmm. But I think I'm doing But I think partly I'm creating permission. I think what I'm doing, because I'm coming up with all these Permission facts, for the discussion. Permission for the discussion. Permission for the discussion. Right, because it's like, he's a Brookings guy. He's got charts. He seems reasonable. Mm-hmm. He sounds funny. Nobody's ever thrown anything at you. Right, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> early, uh, early days. That's where you go. Right? Yeah. But, yeah. but it's because, and what I've discovered is that actually most people do want to talk about this. They just want to talk about it in a way that doesn't require them to give up their prior commitments, say, to the service of women and girls, as long as it's not zero sum. There's a huge appetite out there for this conversation. And if we're not having it, if Mm -hmm. I'm not having it, if mainstream institutions aren't having it, someone's having it. I'm glad you said that because I I have the same discussion in the, in the area of physics or science. When we get into vaccines cause autism, we didn't land on the moon or the earth is flat when we, because normal, like Mm. accredited, um, PhDs don't want to have this conversation or MDs don't want to have this conversation with who they, uh, deemed to be lunatics, then it ends up on Joe Rogan, who has a bigger audience than all of you combined. And now the discussion, right. because it's not being happened, because it's not happening between responsible people, it's now right. happening between yep. irresponsible people. If, if, hard, if there are hard things happening, hard questions, and you just, you just ignore them, right? And hope that they'll somehow, that no one will notice them, that doesn't happen. People mm. will notice them and they will pick them up. I'll give you an example. I was having a, an argument mm. with, I, I would describe him as a men's rights activist. I mm. don't know if he would accept the, the, mm. the guy who was, it was a private conversation. He said, well, they don't care about male suicide. I said, okay, who's they? And he said, the government, the CDC. I said, mm. I'm sure they do care. Why, why do you say that? He sent me a link. The link was to the CDC page on uh, disparities in suicide. Mm. And it doesn't have a subsection on by gender. It does veterans, it does LGBTQ, it does, yeah. it does mm-hmm. not, it doesn't have it. And, and I'm looking at this while I'm on the phone with this guy and he's saying, you see, there isn't a section on the CDC website on disparities in suicide mm-hmm. that points out that there is a big, there's a four fold gap in suicide. And I'm literally, I'm cursing the CDC bureaucrats while I'm on the phone with this guy because I can't tell him he's crazy mm-hmm. when they haven't got that on the website. So I'm yeah. like, for the love of God, 
Put that on the website. Have a whole section. Have a task force on male mental health. Mm -hmm. Get the Gender Policy Council to do work on boys but, and men but, so that the next time yes. I'm on the phone with that guy, I can yeah. say, you're crazy. But, but it could is. it yeah. be because there are people in the CDC who are so politically progressive, they do not want to have that subset? Could that possibly be the reason? Yeah. I yeah. think that is. I think that's right. I think yeah. for some of them, actually, they just they they don't want I would go one step further. I would or, want... or they're worried they'll be criticized by. Well, re recently, I'm I'm watching. In fact, I did a show or a part of a show uh, last Sunday on this. Uh, ben Shapiro was like very concerned that there's these new findings that uh, uh, young girls are attempting suicide more these days. And I'm like. But Jesus they're not Christ, they're not killing themselves at three and a half to five times the rate of guys. So, so, you know? just, but, just, we, but that's what he yeah. talks about. Yeah. And he does not want to talk about the, the fact that it's been that way for so, a So very let's long just talk about time. this real quick because a lot of people are going to be very confused by this. Yeah, we only got men, six more Men and women uh, attempt suicide at about the same rate. Men right. commit suicide at a much, much yes. higher rate Four because they, rate. they tend yes. to jump off of bridges and, and put guns in their mouth. That, yes. That's why I'm just going to be honest with you. That's the difference versus sleeping pills. That's, that's kind of where the difference happens or slitting your uh, wrist. 